Hello, I'm Angel, and this is History is Fun. Today, we will be exploring a lovely shaker building. If you don't know about the shakers, I will link to a video explaining who they are. At one point, Ohio was home to four shaker villages. The Water Vliet Shakers constructed this building in Van Buren Township, now known as Kettering, a short distance from its current location in Carillon Historical Park, a Dayton history property located in Dayton, Ohio. The exterior of this two-story building reflects the Shakers' emphasis on simplicity. The Shakers had written down their architectural standards in 1821. This building predates those laws by about three years. Even still, it shows that the sect already had an understanding of what a Shaker building should look like. It has a simple, plain design, almost reminiscent of a child's drawing of a building with a clean, minimalistic facade. The back of the building mirrors the front. In 1832, Richard McNair established a printing shop in this building, making the Water Fleet community a vital part of the United States' broader Shaker community. The interior of Shaker buildings were also meant to be plain and functional. The windows on three walls and light-colored paint makes the room feel bright even on this overcast day. The United Society of Believers in Christ's second appearance believed cleanliness, neatness, and order led to serenity, but they did not believe in drudgery. They painted and dyed fabrics in colors with names like chrome yellow, red okra, yellow okra, red lead, chrome green, and Persian blue. The goal was a neat appearance and efficient cleaning. These peg rails served to hang all manner of objects, including chairs. Chairs were made lightweight so that women could easily move them, hang them up when they were not in use, or to clean the room. This practice also prevented dust from settling on the seats. If you have seen my series on human-made light, then you might be as surprised as me to see shakers using candles this way, rather than an oil lamp in this fashion. Let's go up to the second floor. These stairs are painted in rich contrasting colors. This makes it easier for visually impaired persons to tell the difference between the floor and the stair tread. When I think of the Shakers, I think of their quality craftsmanship, of everything from a broom, a chair, and even a little box, all made with the most incredible attention to detail. I suppose that's why so many of their products survive to this day. At first, the United Society of Believers in Christ's second appearing regarded the word Shaker as a pejorative. But as the outside world linked the word Shaker with quality, they became more accepting of the term. These shaker boxes are an excellent example of the shaker's take on craftsmanship and simplicity of design. This detailing is not decorative. These are called finger or swallowtail joints. Shaker woodworkers use them because wood expands and contracts with changes in humidity levels, and cutting the finger joints gave the wood room to move without buckling or cracking the band. The fingers were trimmed so that they became progressively thinner as they narrowed, ending at a point that is just slightly slightly wider than the copper tack that secured them. They were individually hand cut with a knife. That handwork means the finger's final shape varies somewhat from box to box and even between fingers on a single box. It provides function and charm, and the shakers themselves would never have displayed the box with the fingers showing. This was considered the back of the box and would have faced the wall. The Shakers were the first to sell seeds in paper packets.
I hope you enjoyed touring this shaker building with me today. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and here are two other videos I think you will enjoy.